How you doing? Today we are checking out my brand new Swarm Bone Collector Gen 3 by Gamo. It's a 22 caliber gas piston brake barrel air rifle that shoots pellets. It's got a multi-shot 10 round magazine and comes with a 3 to 9 by 40 scope. I'll go through the unboxing and installation of the scope and magazine and we'll take some first shots. I really wanted to just showcase and basically nerd out on this great looking air rifle. So let's get an up close look at the Bone Collector, which is by the way my very first air rifle. So here we have the box that our air rifle came in. It's the Gamo Swarm Bone Collector 10X Gen 3i Multi-Shot with a 10 round inertia fed magazine. Try asking Santa for that. I purchased my Bone Collector from the Gamma website for a little over 300 bucks. You can also find it on Amazon for around the same price. So now we'll see everything that comes included in the box. First we have our Bone Collector rifle and I'm instantly impressed by how solid this thing feels and I'm already admiring the beechwood stock through the plastic. Next we have the 3 to 9 by 40 scope in its box. And then we have a Gen 3 10 round magazine in a bag taped inside the box. Looks cool. The last items included are the user manual and a warranty registration card. So here is everything you get when you purchase the Bone Collector Gen 3. Basically your rifle, a scope, and a magazine. All you need now to operate this is 22 caliber pellets. Let's take a closer look at everything and set up our rifle. Here is the user manual. It's got some pretty useful information in there, so I read it until I couldn't understand the language. Now we have our rifle out of the box and plastic wrap. And when I pick up this rifle, my first thought is how much heavier it is than I thought it would be. And for me, this is great. The rifle feels solid and doesn't feel cheap at all. The Bone Collector logo is a nice touch, and the trigger and trigger guard are made of metal. The checkering on the stock is also a nice touch and has a great feel to it. You see the 10 round magazine receiver, and for me, wow, I just love the look of this barrel. Fluted, polymer jacketed, rifled steel barrel. But the star of the show is the Beechwood stock. Feels and looks beautiful. Very cool shape to this stock and the heavy duty shoulder pad does feel and look heavy duty. And our scope mounting rail that is metal construction as well. Next I'll unbox the included Gamo 3 to 9 by 40 W1PM air rifle scope. So I'll just be nice and gentle while removing the scope from its box. And we'll take it out of the plastic and strap to the scope is a silica packet for moisture, a cleaning cloth, and a torque key for install and adjustment. Picking up the scope, it has a nice solid feel to it. I appreciate that it has included lens caps for protection. I really want to take care of this equipment, and it's nice the lens caps are clear so you can shoot while they're on if you need to. Lastly, in the scope box is a user manual that has a bit of basic information. It's worth taking a look. Taking an up close look at the Gamo scope, I'm pretty happy. This is my first air rifle, and I know there are more advanced scopes out there, but I'm pretty confident this scope will suit my needs of plinking and pesting around my property. A big selling point of this rifle for me was that it included a scope. You can see the caps for adjustment of windage on the side and elevation on the top. Let's take the lens caps off and see what it looks like with them removed. And here's a closer view of the scope without the lens caps. The far end of the scope. And the end I'll be aiming through. Pretty cool. Next, let's check out the magazine. The I in Gen 3i stands for inertia fed. Pellets are only advanced through the mag after the inertia from a shot fired from the rifle, which keeps you from accidentally sending two pellets down the barrel. 10 times logo on the bottom, and the top of the magazine where you load pellets. 
Time to put the bone collector on the stand so I can get to work setting up. I really recommend buying or making some kind of stand as it made this process much easier than fumbling around with the rifle. My stand came with the Gamo Air Rifle Maintenance Center and the kit was around 20 bucks. It's simple, cheap, and it works. Plus it came with a cleaning kit for 177 and 22 caliber air rifles. I can see myself investing in a different stand in the future, but for now, this Gamo stand works really well for me. I'll put a link up to the kit with stand if you're interested. I can't help but take another look at the barrel and stock now that the rifle's on the stand. It's a pretty good looking gun. Here's a better look at the laser engraved bone collector logo on the side of the rifle. And here's a close up of the trigger, safety, and guard. The trigger is Gamo's CAT custom action trigger, which is adjustable. All right, let's mount our included Gamo scope. All right, here we go. So first we're gonna back out these screws real gently about halfway. Give it some room to clamp on the rail there. Then we're gonna locate the pin on the back of the rail that goes into the hole on the rail of the gun. Now once it feels in place, press down on the side of the bar on the scope mount to secure it on the rail. Just like that. Then we hand tighten our screws to the rail. Nice and easy, nice and slow. And we'll just keep snugging them up until they don't want to turn anymore by hand. Perfect. Now I'll grab the included Torx key that came with everything and I'm going to use the long end of it that has the least amount of leverage at first just to go nice and easy as to not strip these or mess them up in any way. So I'll keep going nice and slow and snugging them then I'll switch it to the other end with more leverage and just give it those final few little snugs not too tight. You can always tighten them more later, but you just don't want to mess them up. And there we go, that should do it. Now, I didn't have enough clearance for the lens cap at first and had to move my scope back in the mount a bit. This wasn't too big of a deal it turns out as this rifle is really long and you have plenty of room to do so on the stock end. I actually moved it back a bit farther after this video and I prefer the scope a little closer to me. Pictured here I had to cock or half cock the gun to remove the lens caps which was a bit annoying. I now have the scope back as far as I can go and I prefer it for shooting. Alright let's take off the elevation and windage adjuster caps to get a closer look. I would be super gentle with these caps while removing and retightening them as they feel very thin. So here is our windage side to side adjustment. And here's our elevation adjustment up and down. Okay, we got our scope mounted. We're looking good. Let's put some pellets in the magazine. I'm using these Red Fire 22 caliber pellets from Gamo. 15.4 grain. While I was researching this rifle, I noticed a lot of people who own this gun recommended this pellet, and since it was the same brand as the gun, I figured it was a good place to start. Opening these up, they have a really cool look to them, and I'm really excited to go shooting. I've heard a lot of air rifle owners say they're pretty accurate as well, and I can't wait to find out. They cost around 12-13 bucks depending on where you find them, and come with 125 pellets. I got mine from the Gamma website, but I've also seen them on Amazon and at my local hardware store. Now on to the mag. On the top it has arrows to show you which way to load, and it's a good idea to click this little release to make sure you're starting to load from the first starting position. You should see this little exclamation point in a triangle symbol. This is the part of the magazine that tells you how many shots you have left. 
When you're done loading it, it'll read 10. And when you're out of ammo, it'll be this triangle exclamation point symbol. Now I'll use my thumb to slightly rotate the magazine to the left as the arrows show. We just want that hole to be centered for the pellet. We'll put it tip down and give it a light press so it seats flush. Now continue to rotate the mag until the next hole clicks into place. Ready for the next pellet. Now, the red fires seem to be seeding very easy into my magazine, but if you find your pellets are having a harder time seeding, you can always use a pen or something similar to lightly help seat the pellet flush. Just don't go crazy here, you just want them to be flush, not sunken in. Now we'll finish loading all 10 pellets until we see that the number 10 is in the ammo sight window and we can see the mag won't rotate anymore. And there's our little ammo window. I love this feature on the magazine as it's easy while out shooting to see how many shots I have left. It's pretty cool. Now let's put our loaded magazine in the rifle. So here's the top of our magazine and here's the bottom. This tab in front of the ammo window will slide in first. Now you can just snap it in or you could pull back the green release tab on the rifle to help ease it in. And here's our magazine installed and ready to rock and roll. Now you can see how the ammo window will be used. In the field, you can just look down the side of the rifle and easily see how many rounds you have left. Well, now that we have the bone collector all set up, let's take her outside where she belongs. With the loaded magazine and the safety on, it's time to cock the rifle by breaking the barrel. It takes a bit of force, so I like to rest the butt on my leg. Here is our safety. Away from you is off. Pulled back closest to the trigger, safety is on. For shooting today, I'll adjust my scope to just a bit over the three setting, not quite halfway to four. So let's take five shots at these cans at about 35 feet. Then I'll take five more shots at a longer distance. I'm not gonna bother with the target today as these are some of my first shots with this rifle and I haven't adjusted the scope at all. This is right out of the box. And at 35 feet, this thing is doing very well for not being zeroed in. Interesting side note, I fired about 20 rounds from the rifle before this video, and the first 10 were very loud. After those initial rounds, the gun has quieted down substantially. And man, it's 95 degrees out here, and I'm having a blast. All right, let's see if we can get these last two. Let's up the distance. I'll set the cans at about 60 feet this time and try to hit them from the old cabin deck over there. All right, here we go. So first can, no problem. I like to put the safety on after every time I shoot, just to be careful. All right, next let's go for this big can. Cool, now the next can in the middle is a miss, but I think I was a little shaky on that one. No biggie. It was close though. By the way, I have my barrel really close to this fence board, but I'm really trying not to rest it on the wood. All right, let's see if we can't hit these last two. I'll go for the farthest green can next. I have my scope magnification around three here, but would go closer to nine if these were targets, like little paper targets from that distance. All right, let's go for that last can. All right, hit. Overall, I'm extremely happy with the Bone Collector. It's a beautiful air rifle, and out here on my 40 acres, it's also a valuable tool. We're swimming in coyotes, rattlesnakes, and ground squirrels. I hope to scare the coyotes and reduce the ground squirrels in order to keep the rattlers away. And you know, shooting cans is really fun with this and just never gets old. I didn't want to spend too much on an air rifle, and I didn't want to waste money on something that was ineffective or just going to break. For around 300 bucks, which I consider a lot, I feel like I got every penny's worth. I highly recommend this rifle, and I hope you find this video helpful. I'll definitely be making more videos on this gun, and anything else that helps me out here on my property. So if you feel like it, like and subscribe. If not, 
do whatever you want. I'm not the king of England. You know, it's America, baby. Until next time, this is 40 Acre Frank, and this was 40 Acres and a Tool. Appreciate you. Stay safe.